I've been waiting for years to say this, but Toyota has finally unveiled its very first EV for global sales. And to really make me tear up, they've even promised to rethink their anti-EV lobbying to weigh in on this very surprising development. And to give me a big hug, we'll have Inside EVs and Forbes contributor Tom Malogny join us. Tesla is fighting off one of their biggest PR crises to date after a protester has jumped on top of a display car at the Shanghai Auto Show. Cadillac says they will never unveil a new gas model ever again while unveiling the production version of the all-electric Lyric. Hummer EV shows off its crab walk in the real world. Mercedes unveils its second EV in two weeks and teases a third one. Audi unveils a gorgeous A6 e-tron concept with some really cool features and Genesis announced a fully electric version of their G80. All of this is coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of electric car scoop. If you are interested in everything that's going on in this wonderful world of electric cars, well, you came to the right place. All you have to do is click on the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. Let's get to our top story. And after kicking and screaming for almost a decade, Toyota has finally announced the all-electric battery-powered vehicle, and not just for China but for everyone, Europe, North America, for everyone. It is called BZ4X, essentially launching their all-electric sub-brand BZ, which stands for Beyond Zero. And even though they have announced no specs whatsoever, they're claiming that this car will go in production next year. Now, as excited as I am about Toyota finally making this step, I have to say that I always thought when they unveil their first EV, it would be a wow type of a car, but just by looking at it, it looks like something that's been around for a few years now. Except for the yoke, that's actually pretty futuristic. You've probably seen it in the refreshed Tesla Model S and X, but I gotta tell you, I've driven concept cars with a yoke and it's really not that comfortable. If you wanna make a turn, you're gonna be grabbing a lot of air. Now, back in the day, Toyota was actually one of the leaders in electrification with their Prius Hybrid. Then they had a RAV4, all-electric RAV4 with Tesla's technology because Toyota was one of Tesla investors. But after that, well, things went downhill with Toyota switching to hydrogen fuel cell technology and coming up with the Mirai. And even though for the first time a battery was present during a global vehicle unveiling for Toyota, one thing wasn't, and that was their CEO. Now, he has been pretty vocal about how we don't really need electric cars. Definitely not right now, but finally, four major funds that are investors in Toyota are saying enough. Enough, you don't seem to see the future probably behind all of these diesel fumes, but it is electric and you need to reconsider. And of course, money talks. So Toyota said that they will take the rest of the year to reconsider their position on electric cars. I'm not sure why they need the rest of the year. They can just watch this channel and make their decision pretty quickly. And this is not how I imagined Toyota making this decision, but let's see if the imagination of the Inside EVs and Forbes contributor Tom Malogny is better than mine. He'll be here in just a second. But before that, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Xpong Motors. Check out the P7, a beautiful electric sedan I just got to enjoy myself the other week. It is equipped with Xpilot 3.0 self-driving tech with navigation guided autonomous driving feature and even some cool games. You can watch my full review on this channel and also check out Xpong Motors on Facebook. Both links are down below. All right, Tom, usually when we talk about Toyota, uh, neither one of us really have anything positive to say. But this week, there's a couple of positive uh, uh, news that, that we got. So let's start with their new electric car unveiling. Uh, they've unveiled the concept. What are your first thoughts? You know, uh, looks like it could have been something that, you know, is on a showroom today from Toyota. Now, you know, it's just like a Toyota SUV, typical Toyota design language. Um, we don't really have too much specs on it yet. So, you know, eh, I'm not really all that impressed. Right. So does that concern you? Because even I, who, you know, as you know, is not really big on Toyota, thought that once they finally unveil the very first electric car, it will be, wow, you know, you know, uh, is this a concern that what they've unveiled is 
not that at all? Well, you know, I never really, I thought that that could be the case, that they could have this like secret, incredible EV program. And one day they're like, boom. But I, I didn't, I wasn't sure that was the case. Doesn't seem like that's the case. Uh, you know, this doesn't stray much from, in my opinion, you know, Toyota's regular company line on this. They're doing what they have to do and no more than that. Agreed. Now, you know, they're, they're saying this going is going in production pretty much a little over a year, right? Middle of 2022. Yet they've told us nothing about it. Uh, this is still a concept. How realistic is this uh, for uh, a, a giant like a Toyota? I mean, it's very realistic. Toyota can, you know, we don't know how far along this is. They, they could have been testing full production prototypes for a year already. You know, they've had plenty of time to do it, for crying out loud. Uh, let's face it, you know, they, they haven't really done much in electrification. So, yeah, no, if Toyota says they're going to do it, they're not on Musk time where it's always, you know, half a year later. If Toyota says they're going to do it, I believe they will. How good it'll be, we don't know yet. Well, I think their press release says that they're the leaders in electrification. So, you know, let's, uh, let's, let's keep well, that in let mind. Let me cut in there. It's not just their press release. There was a recent survey and uh, uh, it was a large survey done here in the U.S. And they came out second when they polled people or who was leading in electrification. Toyota was only behind Tesla. So obviously there's a big gap between reality and perception with the American car buyer. Yeah, that's true. Now, the second piece of somewhat good news is that they are officially now uh, reviewing their own behavior and, and, and realizing that maybe they want to reverse their anti-EV lobbying and overall rhetoric and, and, and development, really. Uh, now, it is coming from the pressure from the investors. So what do you think about that? You know, we don't know how real, how realistic that is that they're reviewing their their position. Oh wow, great! It's 2021, and Toyota's going to review their position on electric vehicles because a big group of influential investors is saying you need to. You know, we don't know. I'm still not. I'm not buying it yet, Alex. You know, I've 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 been a long time Toyota owner, but I've soured on the brand because they've been so anti EV and. Uh, you know, I mean, this is the brand that ran ads in the UK a year or two ago that says we choose not to plug in. That was their ad slogan. We choose not to plug in. Wow. So, you know, um, show me the proof. Uh, talk is cheap. Right. Well, I mean, uh, it, it's not as cheap as, you know, over $200 billion in between the investors that are pressuring them. And if this does come to essential, hey, OK, all right, all right, we're going to start doing EVs, uh, because this is this is coming from investors, obviously that's not going to make the board happy. Do you think there's a possibility that uh, the job of the CEO uh, is in jeopardy because he's been on the front lines of this anti-EV lobbying? You know, the, the investors, I think, are looking more long term. Um, the board of directors tends to look at next quarter's profits and Toyota, you know, is 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 doing pretty good. Uh, so I don't personally think that uh, the CEO has anything to worry about at this time. Uh, you know, he's he's led the company through, you know, COVID and so forth. And the 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 the, the numbers are still there. Toyota's doing very good. They keep, um, you know, their market share. So I think that's really what it comes down to. Um, but, you know, it's not it's we do need to make it a point to bring up that, like you said, there's some outside pressure now. So things are starting to, you know, not be all rosy and cherry for him. But uh, let's see. I don't think at this point he's in any danger personally. Don't forget to subscribe to Tom's channel. That's right. He's got one of those as well. I put a link to it in the description of this video. Let's move on to the next story. And most of our remaining stories came out of the Shanghai Auto Show. But the top story had nothing to do with a car or a technology. It was a protest. An unhappy Tesla customer has jumped on top of Tesla's display model and started yelling about the problem that she had with brakes in her Tesla wearing a shirt saying brakes don't work. Now at first Tesla didn't really respond but then the social media and national media in China has picked up the story painting Tesla as an arrogant company that doesn't care about their customers 
and then it snowballed into a huge PR disaster. Now, of course, it is much easier to address a PR disaster when you have a PR department. But as you remember last year, Tesla has decided to let go of their PR department and now all they have is Elon's Twitter account. This whole thing has escalated so quickly that Tesla had to take it seriously and issue not only one, but two apologies, also releasing the logs from the incident that the protester was involved in. So that's how you get a big brand to stop ignoring their customers. See, I thought you would have to start a YouTube channel, work on it for four years for half the salary you used to make at 60 hours a week, and then maybe you make a difference. But you know, this whole jumping on top of the car and yelling thing apparently works that much better. Now, I have to mention that in China, Tesla doesn't have as big of a cult following as it does in America and Europe. And recently, complaints and incident reports have increased. And by the way, the log data appears to show that the fault lies with a protester. She was driving too fast and did not hit the brakes hard enough in time. So this could have been avoided if Tesla wasn't treating some of their customers like Tinder dates by essentially ghosting them. And speaking of ghosting, Cadillac is going to ghost gas cars. That's right, Cadillac announced that not only they're never going to unveil a gas vehicle ever again, they will stop selling gas vehicles by the end of this decade. And while they were bragging about it, they have unveiled the production version of the all-electric Lyric. As you can see, there is not much of a change between the concept and the production models. If you remember, GM did invest some money in advertising the Lyric concept during the uh, Super Bowl in one of their commercials. And in one of the biggest and boldest moves a couple of months ago, Cadillac threw some money at the dealerships who didn't want to sell electric cars moving forward to get the hell out. The production version of the Lyric will have 100 kilowatt hour battery with over 300 miles of EPA range, will have the maximum fast charging rate of 190 kilowatts and will start under $60,000. It will go in production next year and I had another conversation with Tom about this quite big announcement. I posted it for my premium members. Let's move on to the next story, but we're not done with the GM just yet because Hummer EV was caught in the real world doing a crab walk. It looks pretty awesome and we have seen it in their promotional materials, but this is the first time when we see it being done in its natural habitat. Though I probably shouldn't say it's natural habitat. It looks like it's coming back from its natural habitat because it is beat up. All right, let's get to some unveilings. And as I mentioned before, the Shanghai Auto Show had a few and yes, Mercedes-Benz has unveiled a second electric vehicle in two weeks. They have recently unveiled their beautiful EQS electric sedan, and this week they have unveiled a compact electric SUV EQB. Now this one's got a more of a traditional boxy look. It will have a 66 and a half kilowatt hour battery that will probably produce around 220 EPA rated miles that hasn't been announced yet. And it will have the maximum fast charging rate of 100 kilowatts. Now, none of these stats are mind blowing, but what I do expect is a mind blowing price because of that. The production will start at the end of this year. And unlike its bigger brother, the EQC, the EQB will come to the United States next year. But Mercedes did not stop there and have unveiled a teaser image of the EQT, a small van that will be fully unveiled on May 10th. The EQT already has two older brothers, the EQV and the eSprinter. So as you probably noticed, the Mercedes electric lineup is filling up pretty nicely. Another brand that's aggressively filling up their electric lineup is Audi, and they have unveiled the A6 e-tron concept that's supposed to go in production next year. The current Audi family already has the e-tron SUV, the e-tron GT, and a recently unveiled Q4 e-tron. And look at that gorgeous sedan. This is just too pretty it will have around 380 miles of EPA range that has not been announced yet, 100 kilowatt hour battery, the maximum fast charging rate of 270 kilowatts, and it will do zero to 60 in less than four seconds. But it's also gonna have some really awesome toys. It will have the projection technology that will have a door opening warning, most likely for the bicyclists who don't like doing flips on a busy road. It will be able to project the text on the ground, like saying welcome or hey, don't forget your Starbucks 
Starbucks coffee on my roof, it will also be able to project the blinkers right there on the road. I will explain those to my BMW viewers later. And it can even project a game which you can play off of your phone right in front of the car on a wall or on a garage door. I am assuming the next step would be to project a movie because I always wanted the entire neighborhood to watch me watch Love Actually. This will be the very first Volkswagen Group vehicle to ride on the new PPE platform jointly developed with Porsche. Hyundai has recently made a big splash by unveiling the Ioniq 5, which is going to be joining an already popular Kona EV, but its luxury brand Genesis has not yet unveiled the electric vehicle until this week. At the Shanghai Auto Show, Genesis has unveiled the electric version of its already popular G80. It will do 0 to 60 in under 5 seconds. It will be able to switch between 4 and 2 wheel drive. And just like the Ioniq 5, it will have the maximum fast charging rate of 350 kilowatts. Genesis has also showcased the previously unveiled Genesis X Con which is yet another beautiful electric vehicle. Don't forget to check out my conversation with Tom Malogny about the big Cadillac announcement. I posted it for my premium members. If you're not one just yet, that's okay. All you have to do is click on that join button and not only you will have access to a lot of bonus material, you will also be supporting this electric car independent electric car channel for which I thank you. All right, looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time and remember, to stay charged.